the recording is on and uh, okay uh, just want to confirm uh, do you have any lecture today at uh, 5 Yesterday you had a lecture at 5, but today I don't think you have a lecture today at 5 or something, right? So let's start I um, you know our today's session and um, share my screen. Okay. So are you able to uh, see my screen? So we, uh, so it seems like some of you have must have uh, missed uh, yesterday's lecture, and uh, many of them are not, you know, missing the lecture. Uh, the, the lectures, you know, whatever lectures we've taken so far, it's uh, you know all recorded and it's uh, on the YouTube channel as well. So in case uh, you want to, uh, you know. Uh, go through the lecture it's uh, there online as well so uh, so what we yesterday uh, were talking about was cloud platforms and uh, when, uh, when we are talking about platform uh, it is something on which something is built upon so when we say cloud platform it is uh, something on which we build cloud services so it is different from platform as a service. Platform as a service is our platforms on which applications are built. So, uh, so platform as a service is different from cloud platforms. Uh, platform as a service is something on which applications are built. Like, uh, so example, you have a Java application. 
so you will have, you will have a java runtime environment available to you on which you can uh, you know compile your java program and execute your program so that is the java platform in the same way you have python platform node.js platform but when we talk about cloud platforms it is a platform for the cloud services in general so it's something that a cloud provider provides and we kind of uh, so we are looking at three different cloud platforms provided by uh, three prominent uh, cloud providers aws azure and google so aws uh, is from amazon amazon web services azure is from microsoft Azure is from a uh, Microsoft company and uh, Google of course, uh, Google Cloud Platform is from Google. So, um, and we went, uh, to, uh, you know, we understood uh, how, uh, you know, uh, a little bit about Cloud Platform and we digged into this uh, AWS and uh, uh, Google STD and we kind of went into the history how uh, the first uh, cloud computing platform was introduced in the public market. So when we say public market, it means it was available for the public. So cloud, there was always, so cloud is nothing but your data centers, right? So your data centers where your servers are there. So you, uh, all the servers are available on the network on which uh, you can virtualize, you can create virtual machines on the top of it using uh, the different virtualization So on the servers, you can create uh, different virtual machines, and you can, uh, uh, yeah, you know, you uh, you can use those technologies. So this technology was always available. Clouds were always available. Big companies used to uh, could afford to, uh, you know, have a data center of their own. So 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 one of the companies which I work for, like uh, Bank of America, they had their own data centers. They had employees all over the world. So we were, uh, uh, we we had our own data centers. We had our, we had our own servers, and all virtualization technology was used on them. And uh, uh, from for me, we we were doing something in .NET. So you know, all that we needed was we had a local box for ourselves, like a desktop given to us. So that machine was not part of the data center. But any uh, anything that files were shared in the organization. <coughs> So in India itself, we had, I think, uh, uh, around 15,000 employees and uh, uh, then all over the world, uh, Bank of America employees were there. And so they are all, uh, they uh, uh, since it is a big company and they have a lot of money, uh, they can uh, rent a dedicated line if they want. So when you say a dedicated line, we are talking about a ded dedicated internet line. Now when you take a uh, buy internet, you, you know that line is shared by 10 other people who is subscribing uh, to that company like Airtel or Geo you know so you're not getting a dedicated wire separately only for you you know so uh, so uh, so a dedicated wire would mean that the that wire is dedicated for you and nobody else can share it when nobody else can share it means you get more network bandwidth and you get uh, more network speed so uh, so these big companies usually you know we are all interconnected so we are we all already had a kind of a hybrid architecture where uh, one data center would be in, let's say in Mumbai and another data center would be in America but and uh, we would not be traveling uh, we will be uh, traveling over the internet but we will be uh, uh, using a dedicated line so dedicated line also protects you is a more secure line because nobody else is you know operating on that line nobody can hack that line so there's a lot of advantages so you get speed you get security uh, you know and uh, you can create hybrid architectures like you know uh, so we so I could see a machine on the other side as if it's part of my network as if it's part of my lab you know so uh, we don't have to go to some website uh, and uh, connect to our machines on America or Americans uh, don't have to get onto the website and connect to some machines uh, you know in India they can all be connected to each other using a intranet uh, environment when you say intranet uh, so I'm just going to type it over here so you have to understand the uh, difference between internet and intranet okay 
so your intranet is something uh, you can think of your uh, you know your private network or your subnet you know something uh, your ip addresses are allocated to you so something like 192 168 12.70 so let's say 8 so you'll get a certain number of addresses and all these ip addresses are local you know these are not internet addresses these are intranet addresses so where machines can see each other nobody on the internet can see these addresses because this is a subnet you know so uh, so if you understand networking how it works uh, uh, this is what i'm talking about uh, so intranet is referring to all subnets all uh, internal networks so uh, so when you have uh, data centers in america let's say you know there are 10000 employees here and there, there are 15000 employees over here uh, the connection between this and this uh, is intranet you know so this is where uh, hybrid architecture comes into place this is where vpns are used so that uh, everything that we are communicating between the two offices uh, it is all protected okay and uh, so this is an architecture which usually companies look out for so if i have an office in india and if i want to extend to the cloud the question is uh, can i have a similar architecture so cloud can uh, your cloud platforms can provide a similar uh, architecture over here where i can connect uh, using uh, so here also i may have an option as i said we you know these lines are usually uh, hybrid uh, it's a driven it's a, a, a it travels inside the vpn tunnel it is uh, uh, far you know speed is it's very fast so this speed is there uh, it is uh, uh, it is dedicated mostly it is not shared and uh, dedicated means nobody is traveling on this wire okay which means uh, it, it the moment it becomes dedicated it becomes secure also more secure you know on the internet there are so many people communicating each, with each other our data is traveling so that is uh, uh, you know uh, the security level is little low compared to dedicated lines so dedicated lines are more uh, expensive so the question comes is when we have offices like this where uh, you know this organization is split between america and india maybe all over the world and they're connected using secure dedicated speed uh, fast networks hybrid architecture vpn uh, cloud is public right so cloud so cloud is public cloud right it is for everyone so why will bank of america uh, publish uh, you know expose their offices with uh, all the you know there's so much of uh, confidential information like customers data you know so let's say this is a government okay this is a government then they may have all our other card information why would one go for cloud so cloud flat cloud uh, providers or cloud platforms have to be secure and this is where they also provide the very same things what this office is uh, you know the way this uh, uh, the way uh, offices are connected uh, in uh, normal uh, you know uh, environments why do i like a space so let me pick this up a little bit on top take it on top okay so they also promise a secure uh, connection they can give you a dedicated line if you want that is your choice okay and uh, can i fill this is it possible i don't think so So they can give you a secure uh, dedicated line if you want so uh, let me see this they can give you a fast network they can give you hybrid and vpn uh, 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 services so uh, how to get this done you will have to look at the services so uh, um, 
uh, AWS has VPN service and uh, they have something service uh, such as uh, you know uh, you can use uh, so I'm going to just type it in the side and maybe in a different color something such as direct connect so if you know how to uh, if you try to uh, you know try this service AWS service direct connect you know try to do some experiment with it you learn how to make hybrid uh, 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 networks you know that is one of the skill if you are in network then definitely all these uh, tools that uh, uh, that a cloud provider provides you need to learn you need to practice this you know you need to look out for uh, uh, you know free accounts and you need to see how you can uh, you know experiment with this see look out for any workshops that is there available from the cloud provider it's a AWS a lot of workshops and uh, they teach you step by step how to do it so uh, so direct connect VPN is something which I remember right now and uh, um, there are other networks uh, if you study VPC you would have come across peer-to-peer -peer, uh, services also so but direct connect is one of the things which is used uh, to connect uh, directly between uh, you know uh, uh, between one between on-premises and cloud so when you say on premises it can mean something like our offices or so premise means a location right so it is like saying my location versus cloud location so on premises versus cloud so how do you connect and how it is secure so you need all this security it has to be dedicated most likely uh, there has to be it has to be fast so if for the speed purpose uh, there are technologies such as cloud front you know you can uh, use CloudFront technology, you can use uh, Route 53 services, uh, AWS Route 53 services where you can get dedicated uh, domains and uh, um, you know you can get some networking services. So there are different networking, the idea is uh, you know whatever is provided in your normal uh, um, office uh, environment or by that is used by very big companies that is also provided by cloud and it is protected and it is not just, just because it is available for the public it does not mean it is ever the you know these lines are available uh, you know uh, to everyone So whenever you are evaluating a cloud server, so whenever you are eval evaluating a cloud provider, right? You have to look into uh, all these factors. You have to also look into uh, how many, uh, which all regions, where all their data centers are. The more closer the, the data center. Uh, uh, the more faster it will be. So we have a Mumbai region, right? So if it is, if we connect to the Mumbai data centers, uh, then uh, the Mumbai users will have a greater uh, speed. So uh, you know, Mumbai is one of the edge locations. You know, so they have uh, very few edge locations where uh, uh, they can cache, uh, you know, uh, frequently access data. So something, let's say, uh, Netflix is there. Many people in uh, Bombay must be, Mumbai must be, you know, looking at these uh, videos and uh, it is not very, uh, you know, uh, it is better that these videos are very close, you know, as close, uh, the servers are very close and the videos are uh, residing over there so that the uh, time to travel between the server and your uh, phones or wherever you're seeing the videos that, you know, that latency time is reduced. So, uh, so regions, edge locations, all these matters, uh, and uh, the kind of uh, networks uh, that they use, uh, you know. Uh, so, cost is the last thing that anyone will look for. You know, first is your uh, performance because performance and uh, is directly related to your business. Or, you know, if Netflix uh, is slow, if it is not uh, uh, secure, then nobody is going to use Netflix, right? So, Netflix uses AWS a lot. So uh, they use all these cloud uh, you know, uh, services. Uh, uh, you know, you can, there's something known as uh, media services. 
in media services you can uh, do lot of uh, you know video broadcasting even you can do it so it, uh, whatever netflix is doing even you can do it if you know how to use this tools so so aws as such as uh, you know uh, is one of the leading uh, uh, cloud providers uh, this percentages are uh, not accurate so don't go by it it's just to say that aws is uh, first azure is closely following the competition and very aggressively it's kind of uh, you know uh, in the market and uh, uh, compared to aws who uh, i you know who has so many seminars and they uh, advertise a lot uh, azure has been i found azure to be little uh, on the quieter side uh, but still they have the market share so how they are doing it i don't know they but they are getting all lot of company contracts and uh, you know they are into it i think one of the reason is most of them you, we use microsoft uh, operating systems right we have been using microsoft tools so microsoft has been uh, like a dominating software um, you know development product for a long time and that is where uh, when developers have to choose between amazon and google and azure they say oh i have used microsoft all my life why should i go for aws and google i will directly go for azure so i think that is one of the reason azure is uh, they, are, they are kind of uh, leveraging on uh, you know their market share which was there earlier so as i said yesterday that you have to in order to choose between different providers you have to know their history so we already went through uh, this history when 1997 google had uh, come up with a search program you know they had their own cloud platform they had a google file system they had map, you know they have the google data store and uh, uh, they have their own architecture so they had so google already had their own architecture which they uh, were using it and the uh, so they uh, the they extended uh, all these services the very same platforms to the normal public so uh, so that is why uh, google uh, you know now everybody provides all the kind all the types of services like i service pass service and uh, saas service but you need to know the strength areas of each of the cloud providers and which one you should go for and when so google is now when you say search it it is directly related to computation so how fast a search algorithm can work which means how fast an algorithm can run so if you have a very complex program then google is the place uh, you should go for you know so something now when we say fast means it doesn't mean website website is just a most basic thing we should be fast normally but we are talking about something like a scientific modeling which takes uh, maybe you know uh, let's say it takes one week to process a uh, some gene model or something i am not into uh, biology science but i am just assuming there's some scientific experiment which takes one week you know now that kind of computation a single program or a set of programs which takes one week to run why will i go ahead with aws or azure i will go for google that is i am not looking at web running websites on google right so for computation for fa faster computation uh, so in this unit 3 later you are going to come up with concurrent computing uh, what is and then you have data intensive computing and then you have task computing now all this uh, three types of computing they are uh, you know uh, talking about computations and uh, when you have this kind of computations uh, especially uh, you know which is going to take long time which which has to be done faster which has to be reliable you know you have to go with a um, you, know, you can probably you know then lean towards a, a cloud provider like google at least i would think about uh, google in that case uh, so we also spoke about uh, so that is about google we also spoke about aws aws uh, they were selling online books and they uh, when uh, so they were they had their own website so the online application was their main area google's main area was search program later on they added all the other programs like they have their own uh, now you have google maps now you have google docs you know all these things were done later <coughs> but now sorry hold on <coughs> oh, 
ओके या सो गूगल हैज एक्सटेंडेड इट्स प्लेटफॉर्म इट हैज नॉट क्रिएटेड सम न्यू यू नो इट मस्ट हैव क्रिएटेड सम न्यू डेटा सेंटर्स ऑफ कोर्स इट इज एक्सपैंडिंग देयर रीजंस बट व्हाट दे आर एसेंशियली एट द कोर व्हाट दे आर डूइंग इज देयर एक्सटेंड मेन फोकस इज टू एक्सटेंड देयर प्लेटफॉर्म्स एंड दैट इज व्हाट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट ऑल दीस अदर कंपनीज आर डूइंग नाउ एजोर इज इन द मार्केट सो एजोर इज यूजिंग द सेम uh strategy they if you look at their cloud provider you will they are extending all visual studio tools and dot net tools in like much ma- major way Microsoft already had a major market share uh, in the software development market, right? Uh, people don't uh, develop on uh, uh, you know on Mac operating system. So you know, uh, or Java is there now prominently. Java is a major competitor, and many uh, companies are there in Java. But essentially, initially. Uh, uh Java was not in the even in the competition when Microsoft came in Microsoft started with DOS Okay so Microsoft started with uh, DOS uh, then uh, they came with Windows and uh, then Windows kept on improving uh, uh, then uh, they uh, they initially introduced uh, C++ uh, tools uh, which was called Visual C++ so visual means uh, it is based on windows okay so whenever it is says visual uh, it is based on windows of, uh, at least in the microsoft software arena it uh, mainly refers to windows so you had visual c++ then you uh, then you had vb you had asp and all this uh, technologies you had com you had q application so yesterday we spoke about q so they have a technology called msmq in their uh, uh, you know for uh, with them so they already have been developing all these products and uh, later uh, .net came into picture so uh, so .net had has its own runtime uh, just like java java runtime there's a .net framework so right now .net uh, framework 4.5 is going on and uh, uh, so and they have come up with so in .net they had vb.net so whatever was vb became vb.net and uh, whatever was uh, c++ became c sharp then you you had uh, whatever was asp became asp.net so what was the difference uh, the difference is they were running in a different environment so they had basically enhanced the software they had made it more object oriented uh, you know uh, so based on object oriented programming uh, if you are programming in uh, this tools nowadays because java is object oriented uh, .net also wanted also wanted to be object oriented because object oriented is more uh, modular and you can design very well and you can implement lot of design patterns so .net moved in that area and uh, because they are also the competition right especially against java so there's a competition constantly going on even before cloud came in then they were already using their cloud their own architectures so now what is the latest thing that is in the market in .net is .net core if you are in the microsoft arena then definitely you should have a experience in .net core so what is .net core .net core is something like you can uh, uh, create a platform you, you can create applications that can run on any operating system so because today's Oh, 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 what do I? Can I? Hold on. The thing is, uh, uh, every company they have to be in par with the technology. If some other company now we have virtual technologies, AWS is providing virtual machines. You have containers where you can shift containers. you know microsoft cannot say uh, you have to do everything in windows so they are visual studio as of now it combines with all open source technologies also so what they are saying is uh, if you don't want to 
create in Microsoft, uh, uh, my, you know, .NET languages, no problem. I have, they will say I have, uh, uh, you know, Java, I have uh, Python, I have Fortran, I have everything. But don't go anywhere else. You come to me. If you want open source technologies, because people are going for open source technologies, uh, one of the main reason is it suits their purpose. You know, it, it, is, uh, it is free. You know, it is, uh, there's a, uh, it is uh, like cost is not involved, you know, compared to the licenses which Microsoft has. But Microsoft is also at the same time promoting its own product. So there is a, that's a business strategy basically. And through the cloud platform, they are promoting all these tools over here. And uh, .NET Core, as I said, uh, well, they they made sure they introduced .NET Core because suddenly uh, you could uh, you know there was containers in the market where you can you know uh, take a container and run it on any operating system. So that kind of feature was not there before. So we are looking at uh, something that may run on Mac, uh, Windows, as well as Linux. You know, so today's applications demand that they run on any. Uh, kind of operating systems you need to whenever you're creating an application or architecting an application this is one of the thing you have to keep in mind will my application run on other platforms if need be if I have to uh, if I have to shift my application across different environment tomorrow will it work if I have to if two companies uh, merge let's say Facebook bought whatsapp now whatsapp must have used different technologies and facebook must have used different technologies will they merge can we integrate our application without uh, you know recoding you know can we reuse the code all these uh, aspects are very important in today's software development world and that is where web services are used because web services helps you to integrate if two companies are joining then they can call each other using their web services because for web services it does not matter on the other end there's java or there's python you know java because web services they work on uh, uh, they work on http so and then you we came in our last lectures we had uh, also spoken about all this uh, javascript framework based uh, rich internet application that was developed using ajax technology and mashup technology lot of work can be done using node.js now node.js is javascript which is easily available there is no license it is uh, it has been proved to be reliable uh, it is gaining pro prominence in the market so people are going with node.js and visual studio now microsoft what they will do they will add node.js to their open source technologies so if you download visual studio community edition the full uh, you know uh, software you will you can develop in node.js also over here it is all internally built in for you it is ready to use and go so microsoft has, the .NET core uh, is what uh, uh, i think the version number uh, 4 is going on now uh, for .NET core but uh, very soon in 2022 uh, uh, microsoft is going to you know you all these terms are going to disappear so in 2022 probably you are going to uh, not uh, you know microsoft is going to have a you know a kind of a totally rewritten everything in dotnet core so in order the so you need to remember to move from dotnet framework to dotnet core framework you have to rewrite your code to make sure it works on all the operating system and that is what the development is going on right now dotnet core it is reached version 4 by 2022 they are uh, uh, they are kind of uh, targeting that all their tools whatever vb.net c sharp asp.net all that whatever they, uh, this .NET framework can do uh, you know that .NET core would do tomorrow that is their goal you know so they are moving in that particular direction so another set of technologies which uh, they are uh, focusing on is cognitive technologies So Microsoft has got a contract with US Army to, uh, you know, use their HoloLens uh, technology. So it is a kind of a uh, goggles uh, or you can say, you know, some kind of a VR kind of a device that you put on your uh, on your eyes, and it is used by soldiers to get a 360 degree view. You know, so let's say somebody is behind the wall. You know, your enemies are behind the wall, and you want to see them. HoloLens uh, could be used in that case, you know, to look at the enemy without them able to see you. 
so this technology is provided by microsoft and there are other companies also uh, uh, like mark zuckerberg has got his own lens uh, vr lens i don't know what is called anyone remember what is mark zuckerberg's uh, vr technology virtual reality and ar technologies so that is anyway the important thing is uh, uh, the new type of programming is not going on websites okay the new type of programming is cognitive programming which is based on commands from speech which is which is based on uh, face recognition like you are uh, you know I, it is not like you are putting in your username password you know anymore means you are doing it but uh, we are moving more towards uh, cognitive technologies where I, uh, the iphone can look at your face and uh recognize it's you and it will open up the login you know it will uh, log log you in automatically you can use a thumbprint you can use a eye scan you can use all these biometric ways to verify a person who the, if the person is that person uh so that so cognitive so the new type of programming is cognitive program so you need to learn all at least uh, you know if you're doing a project this is something you could do you can do something in vr you can do something in cognitive in cognitive uh, you know you can probably use if you want to do it for iphone you can use siri technology you can use alexa technology in amazon and uh, microsoft cortana technology and uh, yeah so ar and vr technology is another set of technologies which is going to be there in the future so you know uh, and uh, apart from this uh, quantum computing is coming up so in the future all these skills are going to be more important right cognitive skills your uh, ar vr skills quantum computing skills so you and this all these tools uh, are uh, mostly they are easily available on cloud and they have uh, you can just pick up one work any workshop do a simple experiment and build a small project around it you don't have to do something complex just do one simple thing and do it correctly your project should be as big as your assignment that we did you know the demo assignment it should not be bigger than that because the timeline won't uh, you know uh, let you do because of the, you know you need time for documentation and stuff so microsoft's approach has been always to uh, provide cloud but behind the cloud what it is trying to do it is trying to promote your uh, they are trying to promote their platform and that is where you need to understand what is happening exactly why these companies are coming into the cloud arena because now everyone is uh, if a, only aws is there in the market and aws is providing everything at a low cost all these other companies uh, they will uh, they com- you know they will lose business and uh, eventually they will be out so if you are not in uh, if you're not running as fast as the uh, your competitor you are losing So nowadays all these technologies it is not easy to install it is not easy to configure so the idea is uh, they don't want uh, developers or companies to focus uh, more on installation and configuration they want they want to use the approach of uh, you know uh, uh, switch on a service start using it you know that is something that type of servicing in the cloud is called utility servicing or utility computing you can say where everything is like you know i am uh, using a utility uh, such as electricity right so your electricity is a utility Ga- you know your gas is a utility your uh, uh, prepaid uh, air you know your phone uh, uh, recharge is your like your utility you're paying only for what you use and that is what utility computing is about and cloud promotes Uh, utility computing you only pay for what you use and they provide you all types of platforms that uh, you know all types of services that you need if you need cognitive services ar services quantum computing services media services you know so if you are going for media services like aws is a good place to go for because we have a proven uh, you know a scenario where netflix is working right we are seeing that netflix is really working well on aws so people would go for aws in that case but if you have a company which has been developing microsoft products then uh, uh, you know your first preference would be azure and if you uh, but if the companies are big 
you know then you might uh, go for two cloud providers you know yesterday we gave an example that you know one cloud provider is building Taj Mahal and who is good at building Taj Mahal one cloud pro and another cloud provider is good at building skyscrapers so when we want uh, when you are creating a city I may want a Taj Mahal with skyscrapers so in that case I need to use two cloud providers in the back end and that uh, architecture is also possible so having uh, said this uh, Let's look at uh, some diagrams. So now another uh, competition uh, which is also happening is how fast uh, you know virtual machines uh, you know can be started. So let's say you are creating a virtual machine. In our demo, when we created a virtual machine, how much time it took for the virtual machine to start? Because that time is important because on cloud, there are millions of virtual machines been created by millions of customers at the same time. So to manage this kind of service, uh, you know, is uh, you need to make sure that your services is fast and uh, because if it is not fast enough, uh, you know, one can lose the customer. customer will not wait and you know it, you lose a customer and probably go to somebody who can provide you a good uh, speed so google is also there in the competition uh, but what uh, so let me just show the screen yeah so in this uh, you have to so aws has come up uh, with a strategy uh, so right now the processes that we are looking at is intel and amd in the market but AWS has come up as custom designed a processor for its own cloud which is called Graviton and now it is uh, they have come up with the latest uh, uh, processor called Graviton 2. So these processors are uh, extremely fast and uh, they are the new competition in the market and this is only provided on AWS for now. So there is a competition on uh, you know uh, this uh, how what type of machines uh, each cloud provider provides and uh, um, AWS is kind of uh, as I told you it is it's try, trying to be strong in IaaS area infrastructure services they are having more regions they are having more data centers they started early they started early in the competition they were the first cloud providers and now they have their own custom built Graviton uh, two uh, processors let me uh, so you can research uh, Built on Graviton, but here is a small view. It says like AWS Graviton processor, first arm processor in AWS. Uh, now I uh, I have not studied arm processors as much, but uh, at a very high level, it looks like it is like a you can create a plug and play. Uh, you know, kind, not plug and play, but you can create a uh, you can it's like Lego you know Lego you have you can bring the pieces together and you can assemble it and you can create a high performance uh, uh, processor meant for specific type of application so I may have a specific type of processor which uh, works well for ML programs I may have a specific type of processor which is okay for websites you know uh, so companies are trying to you know build faster application so how can you build faster application you can either make the network fast so you need to have faster network lines the maximum you can do is you can give a maximum a dedicated line you can give a 5g line or uh, but another thing that also can speed up is your processor right so what is the processor architecture being used that is also will determine how fast your program will run and uh, these processors, uh, mo the modern processors, they all use core technology. So one processor will have multiple cores. So how many cores uh, each processor will have? And that one core is a processor in itself. It is an executing unit within a... Um, let me draw a small... 
diagram that so i hope uh, you understand the difference between processor and core uh, if not then definitely uh, go through the you know the slides i think it's there in unit 1 uh, where we are talking about uh, virtualization and uh, there is parallel computing in unit 1 where we are talking about different types of processors si si you know uh, processor architecture so we are looking at si md architecture single instruction multiple data then single uh, then multiple instruction multiple data and then multiple instruction single data and single instruction single data so multiple instruction means you can execute multiple uh, more than one machine instruction at the same time so this is only possible when you have two different cores you know so if you have a single instruction and uh, multiple data means uh, you can uh, run something such as a for loop over here so for so this we will uh, come up later also like for i is equal to 15 so i will say a is equal to um, you know i a is equal a of uh, let's say i is equal to i right so if you have this kind of programs the, this programs uh, this uh, program can be uh, if you run it on um, uh, single inst SIM simd it mean multiple data i mean there is 15 this data set has 15 data elements and each data element each uh, command is in, uh, you know is operating on one particular value of i so if you have 15 cores in a processor so uh, as i said this is a processor over here So let's um, so this is a processor, and uh, within the processor we have cores, you know. And whenever you are asking for uh, CPUs, right, on your AWS website, when you saying I want four CPUs, five CPUs, you're not asking for the entire processor. What you are asking for is a core. Okay, it is these cores are called. v cpus virtual cpus so this is a watch a processor level virtualization that you are using over here so if you are getting four cpus you are getting four cores uh, so the question comes is if you give me only one core of the entire processor how fast that core is right that is the main question can my program run fast and this is where uh, you know uh, all these uh, processors come into place and uh, they uh, try to beat the competition Uh, because of it so a uh, graviton 2 can run maybe your entire virtual machine a uh, one core can be assigned one virtual machine only one core okay not the entire processor so you can think how powerful the core would be and if it is a uh, something of this kind of program which is running on simd kind of processor architecture you can split uh, you know this things into 15 instructions with different i values and split the all the uh, you know run each instruction or each uh, loop uh, simultaneously on each of the cores if there are 15 cores this will finish in a uh, single instruction uh, timeline right if the single instruction takes uh, let's say single instruction uh, takes 1 uh, second it is not 1 second it is definitely in nanoseconds uh, but let's assume that if it takes 1 second then we are looking at this entire 15 uh, data elements been processed in 1 second instead of 15 seconds so that is what the power of parallel computing is and uh, uh, we will look at it more uh, when we come into when we get into computing uh, in the unit 3 but the idea is uh, uh, graviton processor has 5 billion transistors and uh, uh, it is uh, this is probably the thickness uh, probably they are looking at and they are uh, the performance this processor So this was a test processor. This was the first time AWS. Uh, AWS is not a processor manufacturer. The main processor manufacturer in the company in the world is Intel, and AMD is a competitor. And uh, now 
uh, AWS is saying no, we are infrastructure providers, we want to be leaders in infrastructure provider, so might as and we cannot wait for Intel to develop something. So you see what the world is happening, uh, you know, uh, companies are not waiting for other, you know, all these uh, leaders to build something which is taking time, they are building their own, you know, so they have built a custom uh, processor which is called Graviton2. And now, after the success of Graviton, they got, they got few customers and they felt there is a market for it. Uh, they have built something known as Graviton 2 and uh, we'll have to see how these things build up. And you can see the difference. Uh, this is 5 billion transistors and this is 30 billion uh, transistors. And the performance is also double. So Graviton was good and this is like superb, like very good. So for computation, which is like very heavy computation that we spoke about this kind of service is very nice and this kind of service is easily available on the cloud so you can create a virtual machine which uses Graviton 2 processor as of date so if you go to aws.com you can have a look at it which is the uh, what kind of virtual machine or what kind of AMI image that you need to pick up to create uh, you know this uh, kind of machine with this kind of processor so now they have something known as uh, hypervisors, uh, Nitrolite hypervisor. So what is Nitrolite hypervisor? This is also provided by, this is very specific to AWS cloud. So as you know, all virtual machines they run, they are created by the hypervisors. So who, in, a, in our case, when we did a demo, uh, what was a hypervisor? We were using Oracle virtual box. That was a hypervisor. But how good that was, that hypervisor was a uh, hypervisor type 2 which was running over the operating system and the operating system was running over a hardware. But this Nitrolite hypervisor, the way, there's a word called light itself in the in a hypervisor, it says it is a very light version, it is a very thin version and it is a very fast version. So this is a modern time hypervisor which was built by uh, AWS uh, and this is, they are trying because if you have a thinner hypervisor means you know and if you have a faster hypervisor and uh, it is beating you know it's better than any other processor it is cloud specific it is more catered towards cloud uh, technology then you are beating the competition right so uh, so this is what they are uh, when you have a light so hypervisor and you have when you have a fast processor you can easily know that how fast a virtual machine is going to uh, be created it is going so it is trying to beat Google Google is trying to be faster and AWS is also now trying to be faster it is not going to back down if uh, they are going to build a rocket to Mars AWS will build a rocket for Venus that is the kind of competition is going on between the two so you cannot so if you are looking for infrastructure services then definitely AWS is uh, you know committed towards investing the money in and it is a win-win situation for all the customers in the world okay and there is something known as uh, neoverse arm uh, processor uh, so this is something as i told you i have not dealt with arm processor but these words you are not going to find in, in textbooks uh, as such but whenever you are talking about platforms all these points you need to keep in mind what is happening where they came from who is a market who is a comp you know uh, who is uh, heading right now in the market, what is the market share and what are the services provided by each of these cloud providers and what is their strength area. So as we said AWS has a very strong area of uh, IAAS. So here in this architecture as I told you Amazon was already selling books right they were already using all these technologies so what is the kind of architecture uh, you know they were using right. So, so here they were using elastic block storage. So we have already gone through what is an elastic block storage uh, last semester in unit uh, in semester two, right? We went went through this too. Then we have elastic compute cloud where virtual machines are uh, created. This was the first service which was introduced uh, by AWS to the general public. But they were using these architectures on their own, right? So they internally for their own application, they have this kind of architectures already been used. They are using simple queue service. So uh, maybe I'll explain you what is a queue service. Uh, again, I have already explained in the past. But if you notice, uh, queue service is like uh, you know on one side uh, there is a service requester, and on the other side there is a, a service processor. So if you see uh, this arrow mark, okay, 
I don't know. Can I draw? Can I copy this? Hold on. Let's see if I can. So you can see this. Uh, oh, can I make it real thick? So this is a queue, which is an application. Okay, it's just a. It may be a Java application, or it, and it is using uh, basically queue is basically you know it helps you in writing your uh, asynchronous kind of programs where uh, you call a function and you place it in the queue, and then the uh, somebody on the other side is going to execute that function and return it back to you later. So, so here the you get a service request. You this blue line I'm drawing over here. It's coming up from here, right? And whatever request is coming up, it is put in the queue. Maybe million people are requesting to create a virtual machine. Now you cannot keep uh, everybody. Uh, you know, um, you cannot do it at the same time, right? So, and you cannot block this front ends just because there are so many customers coming in. So, what the one strategy is to use. Queue service, you know, just uh, the service requester will give it to some other program, which is called the simple queue service, and some uh, service uh, the on the other side the service processor. So this fellow VM will remove the function from the queue and execute it over here. Okay, not thick enough. Um, just trying to draw it again so that you can see because I am not able to see this. <laughs> so you see, uh, so queue service is like a intermediator program. So uh, so you need to understand uh, queue architecture uh, for that, you know, and uh, queue architecture is uh, queues are used, uh, you know. everywhere and uh, so what is a queue right so let's take an example so queue let's say uh, you are going to buy a ticket for the train so uh, train so what do you do you go to the platform and there is a ticket counter right and you are, uh, all the customers you know all the passengers they make a queue right there is a passenger queue So on one end there is a service requester, and on the other end there is a you know ticket uh, whatever that employee you know ticket provider employee. So this is a kind of uh, so you have a queue over here so. So on this queue, so this queue keeps on building, right? So somebody has to put uh, the request on the, you know, be on the queue over here. So the queue is keeping on building. And this is how, uh, so one at a time, the ticket, the ticket counter, uh, the, uh, the, sorry. So one at a time, this employee will, uh, you know, process uh, one uh, queue item at a time it will uh, pick it up and once it has processed it this will go out of the queue so once this passenger gets a ticket he moves out of the queue then the second passenger is uh, you know using uh, will uh, process his request will be processed and this kind of uh, uh, this is a very same uh, technology uh, you know architectures which is followed in uh, yeah, which is followed in your queue architecture. So in queue architecture, you will have uh, a you kind of a queue processor in between. So let's say this is a queue processor, and uh, you will have a uh, some kind of a queue on one side, and you will have a somebody queue. Um, Sorry, this will be queue request and 
uh, Q processor. Q requester, you can say, sorry. Q requester and Q processor, and in between you have a Q. So, in the Q architecture, these three are different programs. Uh, so, it is not the same program. So, you can uh, connect on the web service uh, uh, to the queue and put in your request. So, it may be an HTTP request, it may be a request to send email, it may be a request to, you know, upload a file. It can be any type of request. You can pack it and put the request on this queue and whatever the program on the other side is going to pick up from the queue and process it for you. If you are trying to upload a file, then this process is uh, used for uh, you know to manage all the files that have been uploaded but a queue architecture helps you because uh, once some the queue requester puts his request on the queue this queue requester can go back you know it doesn't has to uh, wait uh, because you cannot uh, uh, keep on waiting uh, till your request is processed there may be million requests that has to be processed by this uh, queue processor so and that is where asynchronous programming uh, you know, this is a uh, this is where asynchronous programming's uh, uh, architecture. They also use queues. We had spoke out about an event queue when we were speaking about uh, AJAX over there. Mm -hmm. So you know, and even windows. Like let's say you have two windows, right? In your windows, you have uh, one paint brush. Now this is a paint brush window opened up, right? So this is a paint brush. Uh, you may have, um, you know, and at the same time, my uh, Google Meet is going on, right? So, so let's assume my Google Meet is over here. So, at a very high level, Windows is managing both the windows, right? This is managing this window also. It managing this window also. If I close this window, I click a cross over here. And if I maximize uh, this window by, you know, clicking the maximize icon or whatever it is over here, how is Windows going to know? So Windows is maintaining its own Windows event queue over here. Every time pane brush you are clicking on this, your request, let's say you clicked on your close Windows button, this request will go and sit on the queue over here. Let's assume you also you try to maximize this uh, window. So this fellow will also come here and put his request on the queue. Now, as I told you, queue is an independent program different from paintbrush or this browser window. It is all these programs are not connected to each other in a very tight manner. It is a loosely coupled architecture. So the advantage is once paintbrush closes, you know, uh, once it uh, sends its close request, it can forget the windows will take care. So whenever that turn comes for, for you know on the queue for uh, closing the paintbrush, the windows will automatically do the necessary processing and close the window and remove it from the queue. And this is how Windows works. Windows operating system uses this kind of uh, Windows event system. So this is what this simple queue service is. Whenever somebody is putting coming from the internet and they are giving a request that I want to create a virtual machine, there may be millions of users who must be requesting for a uh, creating a virtual machine. So all this is built up on the queue, and somebody on the other end, uh, you know, like your hypervisor, is going to take care of creating all the virtual machines one at a time. And then you have S3 storage and you have simple DB over here. Simple DB is your uh, NoSQL database. Yesterday we spoke about uh, 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 different types of database. So at a very high level, we are looking at structured relational database. We are looking at semi-structured NoSQL database and we are looking at unstructured data.
So what is there on the front end? The users now this is a VPN connection. If you say this set of A and B are connected over the VPN, so they are kind of in a uh, intranet environment that we spoke about. But this on the below, you seeing users C and D. They are normal internet users. They are traveling over the internet over here. And if this C has to connect to the virtual machine on the internet, it is using an SSH login. If you can see, there's a SSH uh, word over here. This line is traveling up, and it, then it is connecting to the VM over here. So, uh, so that is what the Amazon technology is. And uh, let's look at something else. So Microsoft also has a load balancer in the front and it has uh, REST services. You can see on the left hand side the users are coming inside. And if it is a web application, it is using uh, IAA, IIS, uh, you know, which is a web server uh, product from Microsoft. It stands for Internet Information Server. And uh, any websites or all websites, they always run using a particular web role. And uh, uh, if there is a backend program, like something known as a batch program, it will run in a worker role. The difference between web role and worker role is, is uh, what all it can do. A web role will have limited permissions to uh, you know, uh, work on the web server. It cannot uh, you know, deal with the backend uh, technology, it is hidden. And uh, But worker role has more permissions and uh, 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 a web role program can call a program which is run by the worker role. So this is possible. And this is running in the VM program. So Microsoft uh, Azure, it has got its own storage called Azure Storage over here, SQL Data Services over here. But uh, all of these storages uh, are replaced by something known as SQL Azure right now. And uh, in uh, in Microsoft databases, uh, just like we have in relational models, we have a concept of uh, uh, tables, records and uh, tables, fields and keys and everything. In Azure, you have a concept of authorities, containers, entities and properties. It is not the same, but it is uh, definitely when you look at it, it will reflect, uh, you know, it will seem like a tables and everything. So they are kind of uh, uh, you know, creating a platform where they can support, so they where they can support both types of databases, which is they are trying to support NoSQL database also, they are trying to support uh, SQL database also. So that is about Microsoft Azure uh, platform. And then we are left with uh, Google. So in Google, uh, if you see what is in the front end, the front end is a Google app engine. So if you are trying to upload, uh, uh, you know, if you want to run a Java program, uh, Google app engine will provide you a way uh, where you can, you know, you have to select which platform you want to uh, work on. So you can say I want to write a Java program. So choose me a Java platform and you can upload your program over there and execute it. So your uh, program, the app engine, make sure it you know executes your application on the app server. Internally it manages it for you. And uh, if you are uploading any files, it will store it in the Google file system in the backend over here. So all your user code and files is stored over here. And uh, whatever code needs to be run, these are uh, managed by the Google scheduler, you know, Google scheduler. So there are million people trying to run their own Java program all over the world and they're all uploading it. All the files will be stored in Google file system. And uh, then uh, Google internally has its own scheduling engine, uh, Google scheduler, which will going to schedule all your programs and going to run it uh, in uh, is going to create instances of uh, you know these environments uh, uh, and run it in their app server over here and uh, they, uh, you have um, Google data store so this is your uh, database you know this is the Google file system is a storage and Google data store is your database so if you're uh, just like you have SQL Azure in um, SQL Azure in Microsoft side you have Google data store in Google site 
and what is this memcache memcache is uh, one of the uh, technologies uh, which uh, is highly uh, you know used in today's application so memcache is like caching the data it is uh, let's say you are firing a query okay and you are firing a query and uh, this query returns you you know it takes 5 seconds uh, to return million records so second time if you fire the same query uh, it will still take 5 seconds right so what is a better way to do first time when you fire the query take the results and put it in the memcache so memcache is like your memory you know it's like your ram you know which you are having in your computer so you are not putting storing it in the hard disk to read something from the hard disk is takes more time than reading something from a memory and that is what this concept is you know so memcache is like your memory unit but it is like a giant memory that can that can be used by millions of customers that is what this technology is it is like looking at a very big ram you know right so memcache is like looking at a very big ram uh, and uh, what does it do it stores your intermediate results and keeps it ready so next time if you're firing the same query memcache will know that you fired the same query and it will not go to the google data store but it, instead it will straight away give you those million records immediately so uh, if google is fetching that million records to uh, let's say three seconds from data store your uh, memcache may take 15 milliseconds you know so there will be a huge difference in the performance so memcache is a uh, one of the technologies uh, which uh, is used by google so if you notice google search algorithms are based on these platforms and it is now providing this very platforms to you so that you can write the programs and uh, use the architecture of google just like google uses its architecture to uh, you know run uh, search program and maps and everything So, so clearly you see there's a difference uh, in the architectures that they're using, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, the uh, everybody is uh, getting on the cloud, but they're getting on the cloud with their own bags. You know, uh, they, uh, Google is going to say, oh, oh, you know, you you want my cloud? I got Google Data Store, Google File System, Memcache. I've already been using for a long time. Why don't you come onto my cloud and uh, use my services? and uh, if you uh, looking at microsoft azure microsoft azure say, will say oh you, you know uh, there's a 50 percent of the market is using microsoft products you'll have been building microsoft uh, you've been using microsoft tools to develop all these dotnet application dotnet core application but why don't you come on my cloud if you want my cloud you see this is my architecture over here it's already available i've got uh, sql azure i've got IIS, I've got dotnet and if you want open source technologies if you want cognitive technologies i've got everything over here so that is what uh, Microsoft Azure is providing and if you look at uh, uh, AWS, AWS will say uh, you know uh, we are the we are the fast we have the very good infrastructure we have more regions in the world we have more data centers in the world we have technologies like CloudFront we have Route 53 we have simple queue service Elastic Compute Cloud our, our uh, price is very low they will try to sell on those uh, terms you know so so this is what uh, you can now begin to see you know the how these three cloud providers are trying to market themselves in the in the world but there are companies like uh, oracle there is a companies like maybe intel alibaba they are all trying to get the market share uh, uh, this top three uh, it seems like they are having around 70 to 90 percent market share and the 10 percent is with oracle ibm they're all falling in 10 the last 10 percent bracket but if you look if you go to oracle cloud cloud definitely definitely you will look at oracle products you are going to be able to create virtual machine yes but they are also going to be promoting their products cloud is a new way to promote the advanced softwares for the future market you know this uh, advanced software you cannot install and uh, configure on your own you will not have even if you can do it there are very few people in the world who can do it you know so not everybody can do it so the skill there's a lack of skill set 
so companies may not even find a person who can do let's say uh, ar technology or vr technology so cloud is a better option to go for where the technology is available the platform is already available you simply start coding so and they give you all these workshops where you can you know look go through the steps and execute it so you should build your skills on uh, whatever area you want uh, as i told you as i shared in the past i've shared around 75 project ideas in different aws areas and uh, we may have an assignment coming up on aws so having a aws free tier uh, account which uh, which is like 12 months account is free with 750 hours but be careful on the billing always watch the billing okay uh, your billing should never extend your usage otherwise you will be charged because they kind of take your debit card right in the beginning and uh, Uh, so you have to be careful of, about that. And uh, what? So. Type was your this. this page uh, if you notice um so i found this page um, oh yeah this page i think it looks a little old to me but what it says is uh, the market share of amazon is at 35% something and um, uh so here Where is this is Azure? I think Azure has a bigger bigger market share, but it is in the between ten and twenty percent over here. So ten cent is over here. Oracle is here. Alibaba is here, and uh, this seems to be Google. Is it Google? I don't know. But you see, all the competitors are here. So where AWS is and where uh, other competitors are. This is a old. Um, either so the growth rate of top 3 cloud vendors so they are growing at 41% but this fellow is growing like 75% so if there is one customer coming here there are two customers coming here and the same way that two customers coming here so microsoft and google are uh, and this is a 2019 figure you know um chart so so you can see clearly see the customers there are more customers getting onto microsoft and google uh, compared to aws but aws already has a bigger market share uh, you know and this competition is going on and here you see there is a comparison um between aws azure and google cloud platform so uh, what is the iaas uh, platform so when you talk about infrastructure as a service you're looking at virtual machines right so this is the service been provided on aws amazon elastic compute cloud but if you want to create virtual machine on azure you're looking for virtual machines uh, service if you're going on google cloud platform you're looking for google compute engine so all these three are same if you're looking for platform service so uh, aws elastic beanstalk it will help you to create websites so you see uh, so this is a uh, one of the uh, service which you can use on aws on azure if you want to create applications you can use app services and cloud services on google cloud uh, platform if you want to create application you is going to use google app engine we have already seen that right and then if you are using containers on uh, uh, aws you have uh, ecs uh, elastic container service Uh, and they also have uh, it is not written here but they also have elastic kubernetes service so so you can build uh, dockers and kubernetes uh, containers using the different services provided by aws and azure they have if you want to build uh, kubernetes uh, containers you have azure kubernetes service over here on google if you want to build kubernetes containers you have google kubernetes engine and here you have serverless functions where uh, you know you don't 
so what are serverless functions so serverless functions are basically uh, where you don't uh, where the platform is provided ready and managed by uh, managed by the cloud provider so on uh, aws side the serverless functions are called aws lambda on azure the same functions are called azure functions and on google cloud platform the same functions are called google cloud functions so all these three are same and if you're looking at sql database your relational models then on aws we have relational rds amazon relational database service and azure you have sql azure and uh, on gcp you have uh, google cloud sql and if you're looking at a no sql database then uh, you are uh, which is key value which is uh, you have dynamo db on aws side Azure side uh, the equivalent is table storage on the google cloud platform is google cloud data store and google cloud big table so for your big data you should uh, you can go for big table no sql indexed uh, you have uh, simple db over here and uh, so remember this is a no sql database which means it is not a relational model and it is semi structured you are using json files or your uh, those kind of files uh, you know to uh, store your data and uh, the sim uh, equivalent is cosmos db over here and the equivalent is google cloud data store over here then on storage services we get object storage service where uh, everything is stored as an object so here you have s3 which is simple storage service and the same thing is like a block block storage and uh, on the google side you have google cloud storage so what is uh, one of the features of object storage you can access it using a url you know from the website so any time you upload a file into s3 you will get a website url through which you can access it and download it also then um, you have virtual uh, server disk elastic block storage which is ebs over here managed disk and compute engine persistent disk this uh, Yes, and then this is like for your backup. Uh, if you want to use backup uh, uh, storages, then Amazon Glacier. Uh, here you have Azure Archive Blob Storage, and here you have Google Storage Nearline. So you need to remember the names are different, but it means the same thing. But we have to know the names because whenever if you are designing. Any application which uses different clouds, you have to know which services you have to go for. If you are looking for cold storage, then you have uh, between different cloud providers, and these three you should keep in mind. And if you are looking at file storage, you have EFS, which is Elastic File Storage in AWS. We have Azure Azure File Storage over here, and you have ZFS over here. So even I am hearing it for the first time. So, if you want to do load balancing, there's an Elastic Load Balancer on AWS side. In Azure side, it is called Load Balancer. On Google Cloud platform, it is called Google Cloud Load Balancing. And peering, right? Uh, we have spoken about VPNs and direct connection, uh, dedicated lines. So, here you have direct connect uh, from AWS side. Azure side is called Express Route. On GCP, it's called Google Cloud Inter Interconnect. So DNS, you will get you get domain services like you can create your own you can uh, uh, create your own website domain name uh, using this service. Like usually people go to Daddy, you know, go Daddy and uh, you know that kind of domain servicing. But you can use uh, the cloud providers uh, domain name services also to create, you know get a website name. And so so here you have Amazon Route 53. Here you have Azure DNS, and here on Google side you have Google Cloud DNS. And maybe some other differences. So that is what is um, all on. I think yeah. I'm so so that is all for uh, cloud platforms. Uh, it took two lectures for us surprisingly i thought it was going to be very fast but uh, it two lectures uh, between yesterday and now so is there any other uh, question anyone has uh, 
हेलो लेक्चर गॉड रिकॉर्डेड या रिकॉर्डेड सो आई होप इट टर्न्स आउट ओके लास्ट लेक्चर आई होप इट इज डन प्रॉपरली देर वॉज सम डिफरेंस इन दिन इन द वॉइस ऑडिबिलिटी वॉल्यूम लेवल सो जस्ट यू कैन वेरीफाई वेदर द रिकॉर्डिंग वॉज ओके एंड टू डेज लेक्चर ऑल्सो इज रिकॉर्डेड एंड इट इज गॉट टू बी अपलोडेड Oculus, yeah. Oculus is your VR uh, technology from, uh, you know, I uh, this Mark Zuckerberg's company, Facebook. Yeah. Uh, any other question? So we will uh, continue uh, further now on next week, next Saturday, and uh, next Sunday. I just need to take attendance. Just hold on, any new people who have come in. Next. Saturday, Sunday, three p.m. So let me take attendance. Hold on. taken everybody's uh, attendance uh, so just hold on october shubham and tarik okay tova i just want to see if we can um, find something on the question papers Usually, I have never seen uh, any question they ask specifically on the platforms. Uh, but if you are writing anything about cloud uh, services, then uh, you should. It is better to write few lines about all these cloud providers. So, do we see any questions on cloud platform service or unit computing on unit three, right? So, unit three, these are the most standard questions that they ask, and uh, they never ask anything on cloud platforms. But as I told you, if you are writing so anything such as SaaS, PaaS, IaaS, then on these services you. Mention in uh, little few lines for about AWS cloud platforms also. Like, what are the types of 
service is provided uh, what is the IA service, PaaS service or SaaS service anything that is provided by this different uh, cloud providers so you will get you know there is a 6 mark question and uh, you draw some diagrams and uh, you can uh, we, we, I shared the architecture right uh, that the cloud uh, you know where uh, the cloud provider different cloud providers are using what kind what kind of softwares they are using so you can draw those diagram also when you are writing this answer So again, uh, in unit two, unit three, uh, they are talking about threat programming and task, which uh, which is uh, which are the topics which we are going to do it in your next lectures, your next three lectures or whatever number of lectures. But this uh, the difference between soap uh, and rest. There is one slide inside uh, your presentation which makes the difference between soap and rest so you should definitely have a look at this this is a very common question they are asking all the time yeah that's it okay so uh, so as i said there is not going to be direct uh, uh, question on cloud platform but they are going to uh, ask questions on cloud services and so whenever they are going to ask questions on cloud services uh, you need to mention about uh, IAS, PaaS and SaaS so once you, once you talk about once you write that in the answer you should also write something about uh, different cloud providers cloud, uh, like AWS, Azure and Google and then uh, draw some architecture diagram uh, which uh, they these uh, cloud providers use so with that we will wrap up for now and uh, we will meet uh, next week and we will start with uh, concurrent computing uh, next week next saturday 3 pm so thank you very much and have a good week thank you bye